Hey everyone, I'm Mine and this is set number 70676, Lloyd's Titan Mech from the Winter 2019 Wave of Ninjago. This set contains 876 pieces, 6 minifigures, and retails for $79.99 in the US. I was recently sent this set by the LEGO group through the LEGO Ambassador Network, but all opinions expressed in this video are my own. This is a set I never really expected to get. It was good looking, but it was just a really big mech, really expensive, and I don't know, a lot of the figures in it, they, they didn't really appeal to me. But I finally got around to getting it now, and I have to say, I'm happy to own it. I got the Firestone mech before this one, and I have to say the two are very, very similar. Uh, like, the build style of the mech itself, like clearly the aesthetics are right. This is this is like green and white, which is Lloyd and Zane's colors, while the Firestone mech is gray and red for Cole and Kai, but uh, other than that, like the actual, like, mechanics of the mech, the feet, the legs, the hips, the arms, like, it's almost identical to the Firestone mech, which I do find very strange. It's not inherently a bad thing, like, it's a system that works for these mechs, but it's just weird that back-to-back -back two years in a row we have mechs of this size that are built almost identically. The posability in this mech isn't the greatest. You can see the arms can move 360 degrees, so these shoulder pads do kind of get in the way. You can turn those up and you can theoretically move the arms 360 degrees if you move everything else out of the way. The arms are rotatable fully, and then the men at the elbow, you can swing back and forth like this, and a little bit side to side, but not very much. And yeah, the uh, arms can swing side to side too. The legs have the same weird hips that the Firestone mech has, though they cover them up a lot better here. Like, I like how this looks a lot better than they do on the Firestone mech. And you can kick the legs out pretty far like this, though. Obviously, you can't pose it like that. Uh, you can hold the mech up and the legs kick out pretty far and kick pretty far back. No knees in this thing, though there isn't in the Firestone mech either, but some modern mechs do have knees, so I just want to point out this one does not. And then just like the Firestone mech, there is not much articulation in the foot. You can move a little bit forward and back, and then a lot from side to side, but side to side is not that useful in a foot. Like, I don't get the point of it. I don't know why so many mechs do this nowadays, where they have side to side foot articulation, but not front to back, but this allows her to stand up like decently well. Like, you can get them in a couple of poses. You can see you could sort of get a one foot forward and one foot back. Uh, it doesn't look the greatest. The arms can still balance with the feet, but the feet movement is not the best in the world. Like, this is about as intense you can get it and have it still stand up. If you're playing with it right, you could just hold it up and kick the feet however you want. But, uh, if you're actually trying to display it in different ways, there's a very small limit on how you can display the feet. Though the arms can move a lot and the thing stays balanced. So I'd have to say the balance is pretty decent for this mech. Like, it's nothing incredible. It doesn't make me go, wow, that's the most incredible, like, mech balance I've ever seen. But it's fine. Like, it's a, for a mech of this size, I wouldn't expect it to get all kinds of crazy poses. So it's not amazing, but it does keep its balance well enough. And the fact that you can move the arms without, like, it going uh, crazy is pretty cool to me. So... Yeah, it's not the greatest in terms of balance, but it's good enough for a mech of this size. And you're buying this mech to get a mech of this size. You're not getting this mech for its posability. So I have to say, like, it's it's pretty good in that department. These wings in the back, by the way, are rotatable. You can rotate them 360 degrees, and they are also detachable as a flyer, which I'll show you. Because you can see this is the mech from the back, and if you take this off, you can remove this entire thing. This is a little flyer right here, and you can see the back of the mech. The back of the mech actually doesn't look that bad. Backs and mechs are never pretty, but they did a pretty decent job. I really like how these legs look. Like, they've got a lot of texture here on the back of the legs, which is very appreciated. And the back of the torso itself looks pretty good when you have the flyer on, but with the flyer off, it looks okay. Like, you got some Nexonite night shields, you got some flat plates. Like, it looks good enough. It's I'm cool with it. And there's the mech itself from the front with the flyer removed. And you can see, like, I think I think it still looks very good. It still holds its own. It's definitely a lot cooler with the wings on it as an attachment. But just like this, it's still a cool-looking mech. Here's a look at that flyer. You can see it's got these, like, really elaborate three-pronged wings, which you already saw on the mech. And then th they're rotatable 360 degrees. You've got a sticker right here. You've got some swords. And there's a little seat right here where you can sit Lloyd or Zane or whoever else you want to sit right there. And then you also have some spring-load shooters, which I'm not going to shoot. But you can flick those back, and they'll shoot right out. Moving up close, here's a better look at the legs of the mech. Unlike the Firestone mech, both of these legs are identical, so if you're looking at this side, you're not missing much on the other side. I use a red lightsaber bar piece to have these wheels attached here, which is pretty cool. Some golden Sensei Wu hats right there. And then just some texture to give it like this rounded robotic shape, and I really like the shaping on this. I think the color scheme on this vehicle is super cool, and I really like the look of it. It really, really feels like an 80s cartoon to me, this mech, and I love it a lot. It feels like sort of a Power Rangers kind of vibe, so I love how they did this. I love these little wheels right here. I love this sticker. Really cool look to it. And here's those hips I was talking about, which I said all the Firestone mech look really weird, but they actually did a good job of covering them up here, so I don't mind them as much. Here's the torso and hips, I guess, uh, from the front. You can see the little sticker with Lloyd symbol right there, and some golden detail. I love the head shape on this guy. It's so cool. Like, I don't even have words to describe it. I love the use of the dragons for the horns. Super cool design, and you could flip that open. 
and see inside the cockpit there's room for one figure presumably Lloyd and then two uh, printed console pieces right there which is pretty cool I've not seen that print before I'm sure it's existed before but I'm sure it's existed before but I've never seen it before so it's cool to see a print like that here we've got these shoulder pads these four pieces are printed which is really cool but these two are not and you can actually flip them up and get them out of the way the mech looks very weird with the shoulder pads up like, like that doesn't look very good to me like I think the shoulder pads down makes this mech look a lot better but there you can get a better look at the arm it's quite thin you've got this ball joint right here with this uh, giant wheel piece it's golden wheel piece next to night shield piece uh, one of these pieces right here and then four fingers and a thumb to hold the sword the sword just like on all mechs can be removed just like this pull the sword out and then it just becomes a hand he's just got this little technic pin in there to represent the hand uh four ro three robot arms right here to represent the fingers then you got the thumb right here all of them are individually posable and then same thing on the other side so you can make the sword on this side if you prefer and then you also have the spinning blade right here which is the only difference on this side from the other side and it just spins like that the only quote-unquote side build in this set is Zane's Forbidden Spinjitsu Spinner, and I'm sure you guys have seen these before. You can spin them like this. They spin a little bit better if I'm not reaching over top of the camera to spin them. But yeah, you can put a figure inside of them and spin them like that, and they're a pretty fun addition. Zane's is a bit weird in that it doesn't have any, like, sparkle texture inside. It's just, like, it's just like a solid, transparent white blue, which is really strange because every other ninja has, like, these little sparkles inside, so it creates this weird inconsistency with Zane's, which doesn't make much sense to me, but it's a nice-looking spinner. And then, you, and then you have this very light blue down here to match, and yeah, it's a nice-looking spinner, and this is the only set it comes in, but not my favorite. Moving on to the minifigures though, here's the two ninja in this set. We have Lloyd in his standard Secrets of Forbidden Spinjitsu suit, and this figure is technically exclusive to this set. There's two different variants of it in other sets. You get it with a half mask in Lloyd's Journey, and then you get it with the Forbidden Spinjitsu hood in the Ice Temple, but this is the only set that comes with a full suit as it appears in the show, so it's pretty cool to get that. Uh, he comes with a shoulder pad, he's got the golden symbol on his hood. It's a nice looking design. I know a lot of people really like this suit. I'm not the biggest fan of it. I don't love how the brown looks, and I think the yellow printing on the torso is a little too light for my liking. It really like ruins the suit for me, but it's a decent looking suit, and I, I love how it looks in the show. I'm just not a huge fan of how it translates onto the figure. And then Forbidden Spinjitzu Zane is exclusive here, though you can get a better version in the FS Spinner for $10, so... I mean, it's not that special, but yeah, he's got this bright blue, like, Forbidden Spinjitzu effect on his hood, and then he's just got a standard suit of Forbidden Spinjitzu robes with no, uh, armor piece, and I love the, uh, bright blue on him, and then, like, the monocolor other than that. I think that creates a really cool look for him. There they are, hoods removed, they've both got their standard faces they've had since the movie, well, Zane's got a titanium version, and then Lloyd's got his standard movie face. And then there's back torso prints, and Lloyd's alternate face, and then Zane's back, uh, head print, I guess. Really cool design here in the back of Zane's torso, but you don't get to see it that often because it's usually covered up by an armor piece. And then here are the four villains included in this set. That's a lot, actually. Four lizard samurai in one set is pretty cool. We have General Vex right here. Obviously, he's a named character. I know who he is. But then the other three are named on LEGO.com, so I'll read out their names for him. We have the Blizzard Swordmaster, the Blizzard Warrior, and then the Blizzard Archer. But they're all just generic uh, Blizzard Samurai, pretty much. This guy is really cool. I think I think the only other set he comes in is the Ice Temple, so it's cool to see him here. But the rest of them, pretty generic uh, looks for these two. Something interesting is you may see uh, the light shining through. I actually have blue on my staff right here, which uh, if you guys have bought any of the Secrets of Forbidden Spinjitzu sets, you may know that like this staff is very inconsistent. Sometimes it comes with this translucent blue, but a lot of the times the entire staff's just silver. I think this is my fourth one of the staff piece, and every single one has been entirely silver. So it's so cool to finally have one that's still molded with the blue, and it looks awesome. Like it looks really incredible. And yeah, I don't know if that's a this set thing or if I just got lucky, but. That's super cool to see that right here. I love how that looks. That being removed though, Vex himself is an okay design. I don't like the dark silver. I think it's an uninteresting color scheme. Like this guy looks a lot better and they're pretty much identical in terms of everything except uh, Vex has a different face and a different color for his helmet and armor, but they still share the same torso and legs. So yeah, not my favorite design. The uh, the sword master right here, really, really cool design. I love the cape. I, I love the tattered cape and I love the hat. It's, it looks really cool. And it's got its transparent face, which if you spin it all the way around, He's got like a ponytail on the back of his head like woo. Super cool design there and it's pretty hard to find so I'm happy to finally get another one. And then we have a standard Blizzard Samurai and a standard Blizzard Archer. Neither of these guys are all too special though this guy does have a really cool design. Like I've said it before I'll say it again. I love the design of these guys and this one's no exception. Yeah, these four are with her helmets removed. You can get a better look at this guy's torso as well, because I removed his armor. I'm not going to take off Vex's armor, because he's got the same exact torso print. Just know that's under Vex's armor as well. And as you can see, these two share the same torso print, and these two share the same head. They just have reversible faces. 
and then they all actually share the same leg printing, which is a little disappointing to see, but it fits for all of them, so I'm not going to complain about it too much. And then turning these two around, you can see how they pretty much swapped faces with their alternate faces, and then there's their back torso prints once again. That's Vex's back torso print as well, and that's the Swordmaster's back torso print as well right there. Pretty cool designs for both of them. I really like this one, how it's got like this ice sort of like corrupting the armor, while well, this one's more like uniform and symmetrical. So overall, would I recommend this set? Here's the thing, I think this is one of the coolest designs of any Ninjago set ever. I love the color scheme, I love just like the shaping on this, it, it feels very inspired and I think it's really creative, and it's something that looks really cool in any collection. However, it's just expensive and it's irrelevant at this point, and I don't know, like, even with how cool I think it is, all my initial complaints with it still stand, it's just expensive. It's good, but there's just better sets out there. That being said, like, if you were choosing between this and the Firestone mech, I'd say by far this. This one feels a lot more inspired, a lot more fun, a lot more unique. Firestone mech, while I like this set, I like that set a lot. This one's definitely better, very similar, and only $10 more. Minifigure selection here is good if you're really into Ice Chapter, but if you're not, it's actually a really weak minifigure selection. Only one normal ninja. Uh, you get Forbidden Smith Zane, which is cool. And you get Vex, which I guess is nice, and you get three Ice Army members, which is cool. It's a nice way to get Ice Army, but if you're not really into the Ice Army, the figure selection here is very weak, so it's not, like, it's not one I'd say, like, you need to get it. However, if you are itched in this set, you will not be disappointed. This is an incredible looking set, and it's one that's going to look really nice on my shelves, so yeah, I'd say I do recommend it, just there's better options out there. If you do decide you want to get this set, you can click the link in the description. That's my Amazon affiliate link. It'll take you to the Amazon listing for this set. And if you buy this set through that link, it'll help support me at no extra cost to you, and I would greatly appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, please press like and subscribe if you're new. I do Lego and Ninjago videos like this every single day, so if you subscribe, you'll be the first to see them. And let me know what you guys think of this set in the comments. Are you planning on picking it up? Do you already have it? What do you think of it? Let me know. But I think that's going to do it for today's video. Uh, if you enjoyed, please press like and subscribe if you're new. I do Lego and Ninjago videos like this every single day, so if you subscribe, you'll be the first to see them. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.